Hi, in this video I am going to take a look at some simplified circuit diagrams of typical LED lamps and I will also try to measure the flicker of some light sources, including these lamps. Now let's take a look at some circuit diagrams and some waveforms. This is the typical mains voltage waveform. It's a sine wave and in Europe it usually has an effective value of 230 volts, a period of 20 milliseconds, therefore a frequency of 50 Hz, and a peak voltage of 325 volts, approximately. You can see that at some points the voltage goes uh, through zero and some lights strongly dim or even completely turn off at the moment when the voltage is near zero, which in result causes flicker. The upper waveform is the waveform of pulse width modulation. I will get back to that later but it's usually used for LED strip dimming or in some flashlights for lower power modes. Now I will take a look at some circuit diagrams. The first diagram is usually used in the cheapest and smallest LED lamps, such as this filament LED lamp. There is just a capacitive dropper circuit with two resistors, one for discharging the capacitor and the other one for inrush current limiting. There is a lot of flicker. This circuit diagram is a slightly improved version of the first one. There is an additional filter capacitor and one additional resistor. It has somewhat less flicker than the first circuit because the current through the LEDs doesn't get to zero every time the voltage comes close to zero. It decreases a bit but uh, the flicker is noticeably reduced. The third circuit diagram is a very simplified circuit diagram of a typical switch mode power supply based LED lamp. It usually tends to have a very low, low frequency ripple of the current through the LEDs. There might be some high frequency ripple but it's not noticeable by the bare eye. It's usually used in uh, stronger lamps such as this 20 watt one. To measure the light intensity, I will use this little solar panel. It has an open circuit voltage of around 6 volts on direct sunlight, and here it's loaded down by a 200 ohm resistor. Under normal light sources, the voltage is about 100 to 200 millivolts, and the solar panel acts like a light dependent current source. It's not perfectly linear, I guess, but it should be enough for my purposes. Okay, so here is the test setup consisting of an oscilloscope, the solar panel, a multimeter set to AC amps and my variac, so I can slowly turn up the voltage. Here, this is an E27 socket to hold the lamps I will be testing. So the first lamp I am going to be testing is this one. So, I'm going to turn up the voltage. It draws about 25 milliamps and you can see a lot of flicker even on the camera. And here is how the light output waveform looks like. It's not good at all. There is a quite a lot of time where the lamp is completely off. And here you can see how it changes when I change the voltage. Now I will be testing this lamp. It corresponds to this circuit. So let's turn up the voltage. Oh, there is a bad connection. There's uh, less flicker than there was with the previous lamp, but there is still quite a lot of flicker. And here you can see the light output waveform. It is there's still a lot of ripple, but uh, it doesn't get completely to zero. It's a little bit better than the previous lamp. Okay, this is the third lamp. I assume this one has a switch mode power supply inside. Let's turn up the voltage. 
bad connection again, I think. Okay. It's very bright and draws 74 milliamps right now. And I have to readjust my oscilloscope. Yeah. There is not that much ripple on the light output. This is very good and there is no perceptible flicker at all. Okay, so this is a 40 watt incandescent lamp. It's drawing 143 milliamps approximately. And this is how the light output waveform looks like. There is not much ripple at all. And here is this flashlight with pulse width modulation. You can see that it rapidly turns the LED on and then off. And by adjusting the duty cycle, you can change the intensity of the light. And here you can see a computer fan under this light. This can be even dangerous because some spinning objects might seem like they are not spinning or they are spinning slowly. Now let's see what effect I get with this lamp. It seems like it's spinning slowly, but in fact it's spinning very fast. So this is why power line flicker or pulse width modulation with wrongly chosen frequency can be even dangerous. So, thanks for watching.